now let us discuss some of the properties related to the set operations for example we have discussed the operations like intersection we have discussed the operations like uh, union we have discussed the operation like symmetric difference the reason why these properties are important i'll tell you in a little while so you can see for example the first property which we are going to discuss is the commutativity property commutativity property commutativity property so what is the commutativity property if we have a union b then we can also write it as b union a at the same time if we have a intersection b then we can also write it as b intersection a and if we have a symmetric difference with b then we can also write it as b symmetric difference with a right so this this looks very obvious to everyone why do we actually need to study this property is assume that in case of mathematics in case of mathematics you know what is the set of integer numbers right set of integer numbers if you perform an addition operation be between two sets of integer numbers then if i am doing 5 plus 7 then it is equal to 7 plus 5 you can say the addition operation is commutative between the set of integer numbers it is very obvious right but if you take the subtraction operation then you can say 5 minus 7 is not equal to 7 minus 5 we are get, going to get different results now you can easily see why this property is important because in case of minus the minus operation is not commutative minus operation is not following the commutative law but in case of addition then addition operation is following the commutative law in the same way in case of set theory we are going to follow some operations for example we are going to have intersection we are going to have union we are going to have the symmetric difference now we need to study what are the different properties these operators are going to follow for example the first property is commutativity in case of commutativity you can see intersection union intersection union and symmetric difference all these are commutative now the next property is the associativity property the next property is the associativity property so what is the associativity property if you do a union b union c then it is equivalent to saying a union b union c so what we associated in this case in this case when we are putting these kind of brackets that means we are increasing the priority of this operator we are increasing this union that means in the initial case we are going to calculate a union b union c and then we are going to whatever the result we are going to get we are going to do a union with a here in this case initially we are going to calculate a union b and then we are, whatever result we are going to get we are going to use it with c now in the same way we can do a intersection b intersection c it is equivalent to a intersection b intersection c so this intersection uh, this property is also valid in the same way if we have symmetric difference what is the symmetric difference if you do a symmetric difference with b symmetric difference with c then we can do a symmetric difference with b symmetric difference with c that means all these three operators are going to follow the associativity property and it is very easy to understand in this case now the next property is called the distributive law is called the distributive law so what is the distributive law if we do a intersection b union c then it can be written as a intersection b union a intersection c a intersection b union a intersection c we will see in a little while why these why these properties are important now if we do a union b intersection c then it can be written as a union b intersection a union c so it is very easy to follow it is a distributivity property that means we are going to distribute this a and this operation over b and this a and this operation over c and this union operator is for example here we have the union operator it is valid here we have intersection operator it is it is valid in this case now next operation is called as the de morgan's law next property is called as the de morgan's law so what is the de morgan's law if we do a union b whole complement then it can be written as a complement intersection b complement if we have a 
intersection B whole complement then can be written as A complement union B complement. So it is a de Morgan's law. And the next property is called as the idempotent law. Idempotent law. Idempotent law. So what is the idempotent law? If we do A intersection A then you are going to get A then you are going to get A in the same way if you do A union A again you are going to get A. So this is called as the idempotent law. It is it is I think very easy to understand in this manner. Now the next is the absorption law. The next is the absorption law. So what is the absorption law? If we do A union A intersection B then it can be written as A itself. How it can be written as A? If this is a Venn diagram, it is a Venn diagram representation. This is the universal set. This is the set A. This is the set B. Then what is A? This complete itself is A. This complete is A. This complete is A. Then what is A intersection B? This complete region. This complete region. This complete region is noting A intersection B. So if you do A union A intersection B, that means we are only discussing about the set A. That is why it is equivalent to the set A. Okay. In the same way, we can also do if we have A intersection A union B, then it is equivalent to A. So this is absorption law. Right. This is absorption law. Right. In the same way, we can have different types of laws. For example, we have modular laws. laws. But before that, uh, look at this some specific, some very simple laws. If we have a set A, if you do a union with phi, phi means we are doing a union with a null set. So A union with null set is equal to A. If you do A intersection with null set, inter null set means it is having no elements. A intersection with null set is equal to null set only, that is phi. Now if I do A union the universal set, A union the universal set, then it is going to give us the universal set. If we do A intersection with the universal set, then it is going to give us the set A itself. Okay, it is very simple to understand. It is very simple to follow in this case. Now, if I do A union with A complement, then it is going to give us the universal set. If I do A intersection with A complement, then it is going to give us the set which is phi because they are not having anything in common. Right, this, these are very basic properties in this case. Now let me tell you a very simple example why these properties are so important because in, the, in previous gate questions they, all, they already asked questions just based on these properties and you have to analyze what are the properties which are valid in that case. Okay, let us take few more questions on this. Now let us look at these questions. So in the first question they are asking if A minus A minus B is equal to B. Okay, let us assume some very simple values for this. Assume the set A is containing the values which are 1, 2, 3, 4 and the set B is containing the values which are 1, 2, 5, 7. 1, 2, 5 and 7. Now in the first case, we are having A minus B. This is A minus B. Then what is A minus B initially? A minus B. Then A minus B is the values which are present in A but not in B. Right, so it is... 3 comma 4. Now second is we are doing a minus of a minus b. That means we are going to do 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 minus if it is a minus b it is 3 comma 4 which is going to give us the value which is 1 comma 2 and this 1 comma 2 is not equal to the value is not equal to the set b. Therefore this one is false. This one is false. Now let us look at the second one. The second one we are doing a minus of a minus b. We already know what is a minus of a minus b. A minus of a minus b. It is giving us the value which is 1 comma 2. Now again it is a intersection b. Then what is a intersection b in this case? A intersection b is going to give us the value which is 1 comma 2. That means what are the values which are present in both a and b. Right. So this one is true. This one is true. Take the next one. It is A intersection B union A intersection B complement. We know what is A intersection B. We, we want to know what is B complement. Now B complement is going to contain the universal set. Right. So if you represent it like this. I have a, a, one, one more way of representing this thing. If this is the set. This is the universal set. If this is the universal set. And this is the set A. And this is the set 
B. Now the first one is A intersection B. Now this region, this region is denoting A intersection B. Now what is A intersection B complement? Then what is B complement? This complete region which is outside A, the complete region which is outside, sorry, which is outside B. This complete is region is basically B complement itself. Now if you are doing intersection with A intersection with B complement, that means we are only discussing about this region. We are only discussing about this region, right? And we are doing union of this. That means we are discussing about this region and union of this region, this region. Therefore, this complete itself is a set A. Therefore, this one is true. This one is true. Okay. Now the next one is A union B intersection with B. What is A union B? If you take this set A, then what is A union B in the above set? A union B is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, which we have already taken here. And what is the set B? B is going to contain 1, 2, 5, 7. Now if I am doing A, if I am doing B intersection with B intersection with A union B, B intersection with a union B then that means it is going to give us the elements which are present in this set as well as this set so what are the elements it is 1 and 1 they are present here 2 and 2 they are present here again 5 and 5 they are present in both the sets again 7 and 7 they are present in both the sets the element number 3 is not present here the element number 4 is not present here now what is this this itself is equivalent to the set B therefore this one is also true this one is also true so option number a is false so by just by looking at these questions if you think that they are so simple to do then you can you'll definitely going you're definitely going to make some kind of mistakes here you can see if you take these values then obviously this option number a is false but if you just try to look at this like this and you try to solve it then you will not be able to get it okay